What is the craziest spot that you have ever skated? For most skateboarders, the answer would probably land somewhere between a gnarly hill bomb or an abandoned building. And sure, these spots can get pretty intense, but they are nothing compared to some of the spots that I'll be covering in this video. From giant natural features to deadly risks to stuff right out of your dreams, in this video, I'll be taking a look at the top 10 craziest places that people have skated. So without taking up any more time, let's just jump right into the video. But first, what would you do if you got injured by a distracted driver on the way to your favorite skate spot? You might think it's easier just to forget about it and suffer through the pain, but hold on. Are you injured and don't know where to start? With Morgan & Morgan, it's so easy. With Morgan & Morgan, you can submit a claim without ever having to leave the couch because they have modernized the injury law process so that in eight clicks or less, you can submit a claim to Morgan & Morgan and have America's largest injury Injury law firm fighting for you. So if you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan using the link in the description or dial pound law that is pound 529 from your cell phone. Thank you Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring this video. Up first is probably the last place that you would expect to see a skater, but I guess that goes for all of these. And that would be in the forest. Yeah, forests are quite the opposite of what skateboarding is good for. There's no stair sets, no rails, no mini ramps, unless you build it yourself. And that's exactly what happened a few years ago when Red Bull took Ryan Desenzo and Gustavo Ribeiro into the treacherous woods of Austria to film a skateboarding video. Despite being the complete opposite environment of any other skateboarding video, it was not lacking in any way with Ryan and Gustavo hitting gaps, rails, huge drops, and even a massive quarter pipe for the ender of the video. But this was not the only time skaters have had a session in the woods. OJ Wheels, a skateboarding wheel company, have been putting out videos of them skating unique and difficult terrain for years to show off the reliability of their wheels off-road. And my favorite videos of this are when they hit dirt jumps built for BMX and mountain bikes. Putting the fun factor aside, it's hard to describe just how sketchy some of this stuff is. Not only can you obviously not pedal, so you are greatly limited by the speed that you can get, but also it's not like these jumps are in pristine condition. I can see the ruts all the way from here, so you know it's gotta be even worse in person. And I guess that's just a testament to how good the skaters are and how good the wheels are. And no, I'm not sponsored by them, but OJ Wheels, you guys got me sold. Up next is the complete opposite of a forest and skating in nature, and that would be skateboarding in a factory. That's right, while it might seem like a horrible idea to skateboard in a place surrounded by heavy machinery, fast spinning blades, and large metal structures, Red Bull said, eh, seems safe enough, and sent out Ryan Sheckler, Zeon Wright, and a few of their friends to skate it. The resulting video did not disappoint. The factory they skated is used to make parts for wind turbines, which made for some really big full pipes. They even took two of those massive pipes and cut them apart to make it into a feature straight out of Skate 3. But all that I can think about is how bad it would be if you sacked the edge. Like, you would literally get cut in half. But thankfully, everyone here is a professional skateboarder. Do not worry, YouTube overlords. Everyone's safe. Nobody ever gets hurt. That's a myth. Which is convenient timing for the next spot because you should definitely not try this yourself. And that would obviously be skating on top of a bridge. While sure, anyone with a bit of practice can do a kick turn on a half pipe, doing it at this level of risk is just insane, and I absolutely had to include it in the video. Sandro Diaz, the skater that did this, literally had to get grapple hooked down into the half pipe that doubles as a bridge. And once you get to the point of you literally getting grapple hooked into your skate spot, that's when you know that you might have gotten a little bit too good at skateboarding for your own good, if such a thing even exists. And just for scale, he was doing this 150 feet off the ground, or 45 meters for all you viewers that don't live in burger land. Which means that if he fell, he would without a doubt die. So they did have a net there to catch him just in case, but thankfully Sandro did not have to put that to the test. Now from the spot that most skaters would absolutely not want to skate, to the spot that every skater would dream of skateboarding, which obviously is a shut down water park. Now, there are quite a few different videos of this out there, but my favorite ones have to be the high and dry video from Thrasher and the classic Red Bull video of the massive water park in Dubai. Starting out with the Red Bull video, it's pretty much exactly as I described it. Red Bull pulled some strings and had the water park shut off the water for a day so they could film this video. And what makes it so sick, aside from the obvious fact that it's pretty much every skater's dream to skate a water park, is just how big the features are. The only thing that sucks is they did all that, but then just upload a one minute video to YouTube. 
I agree with Mercer. I wish this video was 10 minutes longer because I don't know what it is, but it is just so satisfying to watch somebody skate something so big yet so smooth and flowy. The other video, High and Dry by Thrasher, is without a doubt not as big or as fancy as Red Bull video, but by no means is it less crazy. Simply put, it shows the skating that we actually love to see. From rails to board sides on pipes, this video has a little bit of everything and ends off with an epic full loop, which I should add is probably one of, if not the only full loop done on a ramp that was not built for skateboarding. It even got doubled up and they did an upside down ollie. It just kind of like breaks the laws of physics there for a second. I don't even think you can do it in skate three. Anyway, the next spot, which is kind of similar to water parks because it is literally on water. And no, this was not skate Jesus doing his thing. Basically some bros made a raft and put some ramps on it. A building a skate park on water is just such a weird idea that you would think sounds better on paper than in reality but surprisingly, it's been done a few times. Most notably, and with the best execution as usual, Red Bull sponsored some Finnish skaters to build a floating skate park. This park features multiple mini ramps with an option to separate them to add a gap over the water, as well as a lounge area on top to hang out and watch everybody else skate, and also get this, it has a sauna to warm up and then cool off in the water just two steps outside. How could I ever underestimate the Finnish love of saunas? The only thing that's really missing from this park is a street section with some rails and ledges and a stair set maybe, but honestly that could be added easily just by adding another section to the park. I believe the only other time that this was done was when Bob Burnquest built a floating mini ramp on Lake Tahoe. And although I do like the natural wood style of it and the addition of a pole jam, the Finnish floating skate park got Bob B entirely. He doesn't even have a sauna on here. It's like, come on, what is he doing? It's amateur hour out here. Anyway, going to the opposite of water, up next we have skateboarding in the desert. Now, obviously anyone can just build a skate park in a desert. That is not that impressive. I mean, that's pretty much the entire existence of Arizona and especially Dubai. But instead, I'm talking about skating the natural features of the desert, which was first done by Jeremy Ray for his part in One Step Beyond, which was released all the way back in 2002. And compared to the typical tricks that Jeremy does, the highlight of this scene, the front side 180 they did, was not really that crazy, but the fact that he could find this spot like this that was actually scalable is what made everyone go crazy over it, having it be featured on the cover for Element. It wasn't until 2019 that anyone tried something like this again, but this time it was a whole team that was brought by no one other than Red Bull, including Ryan Sheckler, Zion Wright, Alex Midler, and Ryan Desenzo. And I love Jeremy Ray, don't get me wrong, but this part got him beat entirely. It's just so cool to see how skaters can take advantage of completely natural features and do tricks on them that are entirely exclusive to skate parks and the streets. In addition, the scenery and the atmosphere made it seem like they were skating on an entirely different planet. But the whole time I'm watching this, I just cannot stop thinking about all the cracks and rocks they have to avoid, especially because they are just skateboarding on normal street wheels. Combining the tricks, the scenery, and the sketchiness factor, this has to be one of my favorite skateboarding videos ever made. Up next is also a type of desert, but instead of being made of rock and sand, instead it's made of salt. And I know you're probably like, hey, you just said building a skate park in a desert is not that impressive, but hold your horses. This is not just any normal skate park. This skate park was built entirely out of the salt from the salt flats that it was built on. And I'm actually really impressed with how well the skate park held up and the fact that it was even skatable in the first place. It's also really cool to see how the salt crumbles as skaters grind on it. Overall, the combination of the stark white salt formations against the vast backdrop of the salt flats makes for a surreal skate video. The salt gives the skate park a unique otherworldly appearance that you just cannot get anywhere else in the world. It's basically an art installation in its own right, constantly changing and evolving as skaters interact with it. It's not just about the thrill of skateboarding, but it's also about pursuing the boundaries of what's possible, showing us that even in the harshest environments, the human spirit for innovation and fun can still thrive. Which brings me to the next spot, and perhaps the oldest one, because it has been standing for over 2,000 years. Of course, that would be the Great Wall of China. Now, if you're a fan of my channel, I know that you've probably heard me talk about this many times before, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but I absolutely couldn't not include it in this video. So to give you all those that don't know a quick breakdown, in 2005, Danny Wei had this massive mega ramp built on a section of the Great Wall of China, and everything was going great until we decided to do some practice jumps on it, and it turns out he did not have enough speed to clear a knuckle, ending up at him spraining his ankle pretty badly. But despite his ankle injury, the next day he came back and jumped the Great Wall successfully, following it up with a 360. The absolute definition of a mad lad. 
Up next is a spot that you probably never thought any skater would ever be allowed into, let alone allowed to skate at, and that would be the White House. Yes, it is true, there have been skaters that have skated at the White House, but it is not an extensive list by any means. In fact, only two skaters have ever managed to get past the Secret Service with their board. The first would be Tony Hawk in 2009, who rode inside the halls of the White House and also did a nose manual right outside. Then in 2017, Garrett Jenner and a bunch of other YouTubers got invited to the White House. Some of the YouTubers that were included were Liza Koshy, Ijustine, Destin from Sputter Every Day, Vsauce, Swoozy, and Jake Paul? What? What? Why? I really don't know why such a random group of different YouTubers were invited. But regardless, Garrett was able to skate the halls and even managed to sneak in a kickflip right before heading out, which as far as I'm aware is the best trick that has ever been landed in the White House. And for the last and without a doubt the coolest spot must be when Tony Hawk and Jaws skateboard in zero gravity. Zero gravity is something that most people will never get to experience for more than a fraction of a second. After all, to experience true zero gravity, you only have two options. You either can go into space or you go in a plane that descends at the same speed that you fall at. And while I'm sure we would all love to see Tony Hawk skate in the International Space Station, I have a feeling that would be slightly out of budget, even for him. So instead, Tony Hawk and Jaws hitched a ride on the Vomit Comet. This is a specially modified plane that creates a sensation of zero gravity by diving sharply from a high altitude. Despite the rather unsettling nickname, it is a highly sought after experience with pricing starting at over $9,000, offering about 20 seconds of weightlessness at a time to the lucky few that are on board. You would think that without the confines of gravity, they would be able to do some crazy never before seen tricks. And sure, they did do that, but according to them, it was a lot harder to stay coordinated than they expected. They also did some tricks in the gravity of Mars and the moon, which seemed to work out better even though when Jaws did an ollie, he literally hit the ceiling. But by far the most impressive moon gravity trick was Tony Hawk's boneless backflip. Anyway, that is all I have for today. Let me know if you think I missed any spots, and if you liked this video, please consider subscribing. If you would like to support the channel and get early access to my videos and also get a few other perks, press the join button and become a member. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.